Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will study Fetal Phase Ultrasound. Scanning the fetal face requires high quality equipment and experience. These are longitudinal and transverse views of fetal face. The sagittal facial profile is best for evaluating the face. We can see a lot of structures. Here is the prefrontal space in front of the frontal bone. This slanted hyperechoic line is the nasal bone. And here is the nose. You can see the upper and lower lips as well. This hyperechoic structure is the maxilla. And over here is the mandible. The transverse view can be used to view the eyes, the orbits. These small structures are the lenses. And these hyperechoic structures are nasal bones. Here is a coronal view in which we can see the nose very clearly and also the upper and lower lips. This small hyperechoic area is the chin. Cleft lip and palate is a common facial abnormality in neonates. These clefts can be unilateral or bilateral. In this image, we have a unilateral cleft lip. There is a hypoechoic defect in the upper lip. In bilateral cleft lip and palate, two hypoechoic defects can be seen in the upper lip. In this image, we can see the bilateral clefts more clearly. The hypoechoic defects are communicating with the palate. Midline facial cleft is associated with holoprosencephaly. The face is deformed and there is absence of normal midline tissue. 3D ultrasound and MRI are much better modalities for such abnormalities. In some cases of cleft lip and palate, there is protrusion of soft tissue below the nose. We can see some protrusion of soft tissue in this longitudinal image. It is called premaxillary protrusion. Due to nasolacrimal duct obstruction, anechoic cysts may be formed. Sometimes these cysts have internal echoes. This is called dacryocystocele. These cysts are inferomedial to the orbits. We can see these cysts at the location of the nasolacrimal ducts. These are diagnosed after 30 weeks gestation. Congenital cataracts can be diagnosed on ultrasound. We will see a round hyperechoic mass in the anterior portion of the globe. In the normal image, you can see the normal lens as a small dot in the anterior part of the globe. But the cataracts are large hyperechoic masses. The distance between the medial canthi of both the orbits is called interocular diameter. This distance is approximately equal to the diameter of the eye. In hypotelorism, this interocular distance is decreased. Also, the binocular distance, that is the distance between the lateral canthi of both eyes, is decreased. You can see both the eyes are closer to each other in hypotelorism. In hypertelorism, the interocular and binocular distances are increased. The eyes are much further away from each other. Cyclopia occurs in a severe case of holoprosencephaly. In cyclopia, there is only a single midline orbit which contains either one or both eyes. We can only see a single orbit in the midline. Anophthalmia refers to absence of eyeball. In this transverse view, we can only see one eyeball. Midface is the area between the upper jaw and lower margin of orbits. In midface retrusion, 
an abnormal concavity is seen between the upper jaw and lower margin of the orbits. It is associated with a variety of abnormalities such as trisomy 21, Turner syndrome, and many other syndromes. Absent nasal bone is usually associated with trisomy 21. The hyperechoic nasal bone is not seen in this image, whereas in the normal image, we can see this hyperechoic nasal bone. Macroglossia refers to an abnormally enlarged tongue. It is associated with trisomy 21 and beckwith Wiedemann syndrome. Micronathia refers to a small chin. It can be difficult to diagnose it because it can be subtle. Here we can see a small chin and it is not leveling with the upper jaw. In retronathia, the chin is displaced posteriorly. It is difficult to diagnose it on ultrasound. In agnathia, the lower jaw is absent. In this image, the lower jaw is not seen. It is missing. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.